Morning. We are still, of course, in the midst of one of the most interesting trading environments that most folks have seen in quite some time. One company at the center of that and benefiting from these trends is Interactive Brokers. Uh, they reported accounts up 61 percent in the most recent quarter. Joining us now to talk about that and everything else going on in the brokerage business is Thomas Petterfee, chairman and founder of Interactive Brokers. Uh, Mr. Petterfee, thanks so much for jumping on with us this morning. I'd love to begin with uh, just a, a, your you know, 30,000 uh, foot view of, of where the trading business is today at such an interesting moment with more retail participation, uh, more trading happening now than we have seen in some time and, you know, where you see things headed? So uh, during uh, last year, uh, people had to stay at home. Many people uh, always wanted to open an online trading account, finally got around to doing so. And as a result, we had an increasing number of of traders that basically peaked in the first quarter of this year. Suddenly, after the first quarter, the interest plummeted and new account openings have plummeted. But at the end of the first quarter, it, uh, at the end of the second quarter, it stabilized and now it's sort of running along uh, stably. Hey, Thomas, it's Julie here. Um how do you see Interactive Brokers' client base versus some of your competitors? And, and based on that and based on sort of the changing tides that we've seen that you're talking about, how do you think you're going to grow that base? So, so the, the two uh, customer bases are, are very different. Uh, as you know, Robinhood customers, uh, which, by the way, I really have to take my hat off to them because having gotten 22 and a half million young people to sign up and, and, and learn about stocks and, and learn about, about corporations and what that, how their life is basically connected in this economy with these corporations is, is just a fantastic achievement. Uh, now, uh, but that's the type of customer they have, these young folks. Uh, the average interactive broker customer is 42 years old. So uh, Robinhood average customer has 4. Point, uh, some uh, $4,500 in their account. Interactive broker customer has 250 some thousand. Uh, so as they, they have 16. Uh, times as many accounts Robinhood does than Interactive Broker has. On the other hand, Interactive Broker has 3.6 times as much customer money uh, as Robinhood. So the, the two customer segments are completely different. Uh, interactive Broker customers tend to be more sophisticated, tend to have a financial background, uh, they they uh, seriously analyze companies. I we didn't have too many uh, uh, people investing in meme stocks, uh, so um, you know it's 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 a completely different type of customers. Also, interactive brokers customers use a lot of margin, so the average customer of interactive brokers uses about thirty thousand dollars of margin while the average customer of uh, uh, Robin would use as $149 of margin loans. Uh, so it's, it's, it's basically not comparable. Now, what we do see is, is some uh, Robin Hood customers regularly every day come over to interactive brokers, but they tend to have about fifty to $100,000 in their account. So these are the, the customers, Robinhood customers who either have made some money or, or started with, with some money and, and, and think that they need a, a more sophisticated platform. Thomas, what are your views on uh, payment for order flow? Do you believe regulators will crack down on that? And what would happen if they do? So I don't believe that regulators can crack down on payment for order flow because payment for order flow has been going on on Wall Street for about 200 years. 
Now, the interesting thing why, why this comes to, to the forefront today is because it is now done uh, among two companies, such as Robinhood pays Citadel to execute Robinhood's orders. On the other hand, if you go and look at, say, JP Morgan, what you see is that the sales department sends the orders to the trading department, the trading department executes them. If they're an internal payment inside a company between the two departments, I do not know. But but the 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 business is actually the same. So if they if they were to prohibit payment for order flow, what would have to happen is Citadel would have to buy Robinhood, Schwab would buy Virtue, and uh, so the, the the two sides would uh, be uh, put together in one company. The payment would no longer be a public event. In other words, it would not be reflected in the financial statements of the firms, and therefore nobody would know anything about it, right? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, uh, Mr. Pettifer, you have about a, a minute left. I'm just curious if you were surprised by how much the public seemed all at once interested in this payment for order flow, which, as you outlined, has you know, been at the heart of, of, of trading for, for some time now. That, that's exactly right. So, so that's how Wall Street has been working, because... You know, uh, not most most institutional orders, for example, don't go to the exchanges. When an institution gives a large uh, order to an to a, a, a broker, the broker internalizes the order. Maybe, namely, they try to find the other side. They take some profit in between. I mean, that that's that's where the large brokerage firms, the large bank brokers trading profits come from, which quarter after quarter amount to billions and billions of dollars. But somehow, people just don't focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, it was certainly a conversation that we know will continue. A uh, very exciting time in the brokerage business. We really appreciate you taking some time to talk with us this morning. Thomas Petterfee, chairman and founder at Interactive Brokers. Really appreciate it.